This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, it's Tuesday, which means we're doing a top five video, and uh, the topic under discussion today, are, well, the, the title of the video was going to be the first five riffs that I ever learned on the guitar. And do you know what? They, they could well be, but I can't um, absolutely hand on heart attest to the fact that these were the first five that I learned. But there were five important riffs uh, that I learned, um, and a particular lesson from each one. And just, you know, that moment when you just kind of realise something that's, um, you know, oh, that seems significant. Well, these are the five riffs that um, had that effect on me, as I say, in the late 70s and early 80s when I was uh, beginning my journey on the guitar. So let's get cracking straight away with... The riff that taught me the pentatonic scale. OK, in the late 70s when I was first beginning to cut my teeth as a guitar player um 50s rock and roll nostalgia was huge happy days was on the tv greece was in the cinemas and bands like shawaddy waddy and the darts were in the top 40 and um one single that i think got reissued round about that time i certainly remember hearing it on the radio a lot was um this one Johnny Kidd and the Pirates shaking all over. Now, I'd sort of encountered this little uh, group of notes before. But I hadn't really kind of cottoned on to the fact that there, that there was some special relationship and that, was, that it was actually a scale. Um, but this was kind of round, round about when I first started noticing that, yes, these notes have some kind of magic to them. And um, the other thing that, that happened on that, on, on that track is that um, that kind of part of the riff is doubled um, an octave or so above, like this. Like that. And my old um, Woolworths Top 20 electric guitar that I had didn't always have six strings on it. It was um, notorious for devouring and chewing through, uh, especially top E strings. So if that note wasn't there, I would have to find it over here somewhere. So then it would be a case of... Um, you know finding those notes um, on other strings. And that's basically how I started to discover the different pentatonic shapes. So, Shaking All Over is the riff that taught me um, a lot about the pentatonic scale. Next! The riff that taught me you can play wrong notes. Okay, so I already knew the pentatonic scale, but, um, you know, I didn't... Re and I, by this time I'd sort of learned how to uh, transpose it into different keys and so on. But um, then I came across a riff that went... Like that. And it's this part here. That... Hang on, you're not allowed to do that. You know, those notes aren't all in the scale. Um... Inadvertently, what I discovered was um, using chromatics and uh, specifically this note here, the blues, the blue note uh, that turns the pentatonic into the blue scale, the uh, the flat five. So as soon as I realised, yes, you are allowed to do that, I was throwing it in all over the place. I was, um, this is what I mean. Um, back in the in the days before, like an internet or you know when when even the the, the monthly guitar magazine was. Too two bus rides away when you discovered something like that a new kind of trick that you could employ you definitely tried to milk it for all it was worth and i certainly did by adding in that note there so sunshine of your love is the riff which taught me um the blue scale basically next the riff that taught me slash chords yeah this is the riff that taught me all about slash chords i'll play the riff um as i thought it went uh, to begin with, it goes like this. And I thought, you know, I've learned this classic Pete Townsend riff, Substitute. I hadn't, because what I failed to realise was, and I knew it didn't never sounded quite right, 
but you know i just thought that well he's pete townsend and i'm not um <laughs> you know but what i didn't realize until like a little bit later i think it was one of the um i, I think i was probably uh about 13 or 14 at the time i was learning this and one of the old men one of the 15 or 16 year olds who used to hang around in the music block at school on a lunchtime actually showed me this way of playing it <laughs> It's still the same chords, it's still a D and an A and a G, going back to a D, but what you've got is a D note, a D bass note going on underneath it all the time, to give it, which gives it that sort of characteristic sound. Like that, so Substitute by The Who is the riff that taught me all about slash chords basically uh, D A over D G over D and so on and the fact that uh, the chord that you're playing didn't always have to have its root note as the bass was um, was an important moment because it unlocked a lot of other things and it's all down to uh, learning the proper way of playing substitute by the who next the riff that taught me syncopation Yes, uh, this is the riff that taught me how to play syncopated. And by syncopated, what I mean is uh, starting and finishing and accenting and emphasising things that are on the end of the beat. Um, so let's go for it. <laughs> There we go. So, what's going on there is we're kind of going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So, it actually, you, the only thing that you do on, on the beat is that very last um, A chord there. That's the only chord that you actually hit on the beat. Um, so, you know. I think I came across this because it was uh, one of those times when you habitually count into something with one, two, three, four, and then begin, and then you realise that you're out of time and it, it's not quite working. And it may have been uh, my music teacher, Mr. Coffee, if you're watching this. I don't know if, if, if you're still a music teacher. Um, but I think it was either him or, you know, one of um, the, the people I was... Um, you know, kind of absorbing information from at the time, you know, kind of kids I was, older kids than me I was hanging out with at school who were showing me things and uh, and what have you. But it was definitely the first thing um, I remember where I think, oh, so you actually start kind of on the, on the and. You're not actually going bang on the beat with something. And again, it, um, it, it unlocked a lot of other things, um, you know, in terms of timing and, um, you know, other aspects of uh, phrasing and stuff. So that was an important one for me. Next. The riff that taught me about odd time signatures. Yeah, this is the final one. Um, the, um, the riff that taught me all about kind of unusual time signatures um, I'll, or, or odd time signatures. I'll play it for you. It goes like this. <laughs> Yeah, um, track one, side one of the eponymous first album by uh, Asia, um, Heat of the Moment. Um, it's just a catchy little riff, um, but again, I think it was when I was trying to play this along with... Um, do you remember those uh, Casio keyboards that were also a calculator? Do you remember those? Um, they were about year big about that size and it was a little keyboard and a calculator and it had a drum beat in it and i seem to remember there was one of those floating around the music department at school and um you know putting a drum beat in and trying to play that riff along with it and you were always kind of out it's because it's got an unusual sort of timing it's basically two bars of three four and a bar of four four it's going i'll, I'll count and try and count and play it at the same time it's kind of one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two three and four and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two three and four and like that so it's two bars of three and then a bar of four uh or you can count it as one long bar of ten or you can count it in you know 
um, I guess a bar of seven and a bar of three, or, or however you want to count it. But it's it's not standard four four all the way through, as I discovered uh, trying to play it along with that um, little Casio um, keyboard, the cutting edge of uh, affordable nineteen eighties music technology. So there you go, folks. There are five riffs that I learned early on in uh, my guitar playing journey that sort of taught me a lot of important things that I've um, carried with me ever since. Um, let me know, if if any, what yours uh, were, what your equivalents were, riffs that you learned early on that um, have stayed with you and you, you remember the lessons that they taught you. Really interested to know what your thoughts on that are. But that is the video for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, little trip down memory lane with me. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it. Don't forget, as always, the live stream every Friday, 5pm, UK time where we talk music and guitars and drink beer what I ask you is not to like about that a fantastic way to kick off the weekend and I'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now